Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. I'm bringing you this new diorama video and boy howdy, like I'm just so excited to share this with you guys. First of all, you know, here at The Domain, dioramas are our number one. They're our most viewed videos, they're the ones I enjoy making the most. But really, I've been struggling recently because I just don't have the pieces to make them in Hong Kong. That's where our legendary friend Bam Bam Production comes in. He sent me a ton of diorama set pieces, scenery, terrain, foliage, all that kind of stuff. And this is the first diorama I've made with all those new pieces. So I want to talk this through bit by bit, break it down, my thought process behind it, the lore and the story. This is part three, I guess. Part one is a live stream this morning where I unpackaged Fireteam Osiris. Then part two was where I built this live. If you want to join in on those dioramas in the future, make sure to turn the bell on on this channel and you'll know when I I go live next. Yeah, we just, as the community, built this together, this gorgeous display of Fireteam Osiris against the Mithril Didact, which I've come up with some cool lore behind him as well. Let's break this down bit by bit. So this diorama takes place just before Halo 5, a little bit after Halo 4. Fireteam Osiris have been a team for quite a while now. They work really well together, so the UNSC trusted them on this new assignment. So basically, a call came in from the outer colonies. Very strange, scrambled frequency. The UNSC trying to call for emergency assistance, reinforcements from the infinity. Nobody could really make out what it was. They just said some kind of gigantic robot. Now after Halo 4, there haven't been many Promethean sightings for a while, so the UNSC is very concerned by this. They send Fireteam Osiris in with some more UNSC troops to try and assess the situation, and they would have never expected to come across the Mithril Didact. This is a reincarnation of the Didact that died at the end of Halo 4 slash the comics. He came back in the comics for a while, but his death was really in Halo 4 for most fans. But he's back right now as the Mithril reincarnation. This melted hot silver custom that was made by Miniature Hobbyist alongside this Watcher and the Crawler. They're some of my favorite figures and I've been wanting to use them in a diorama for a long time. Once I finally got hold of Fireteam Osiris, it seemed like the perfect opportunity. A lot of the figures that you'll see on this diorama are downed UNSC forces. They were the ones that were holding this base to begin with. You can see the start of the UNSC base on this barbed wire. I didn't go into much detail about that. That's somewhere off camera. But the UNSC forces, they detected some motion in this jungle canopy. And when they arrived, they met a swift end from the Didact. You'll see some of the UNSC reinforcements coming in now. One of them being choked by the Didact. One stuck in barbed wire. One being helped by Spartan book and one being assisted by some medics that have come in with Fireteam Osiris. Osiris obviously bringing medics in because they know there was a distress signal that went out. There's definitely going to be some UNSC casualties and yeah, they definitely weren't wrong about that. The first thing I did when building this diorama was assess my base plates. I spent a good hour before the live stream laying them out, choosing the correct order that I was really happy with and then layering a load of pieces on top and then slowly building the jungle canopy. The trees were one of the last things to add, then the flowers to sort of just add some vibrance and some extra garnishes to the diorama. Garnish is a funny word to use in that situation, but kind of works. And then the figures were the very, very last thing I added once the diorama was 100% complete. I knew in my head what I wanted, uh, sort of a nod to Halo 4, a lot of those jungle missions. The first footage of Halo 4 we ever saw was in the jungle, so this seemed appropriate. I knew that the figures would kind of just complement the scenery that I had going on around. The scenery would more tell the story and the figures would be added afterwards. Not as an afterthought, and definitely there was some scenery that I changed around once I'd added the figures, but I wanted the main jungle to be the centerpiece here. And I didn't want too much fighting, you know, a lot of my dioramas are nothing but gunfire. I wanted this to be more of like a first contact scenario. So there isn't much gunfire going on apart from Tanaka's sniper rifle. Locke is just about to open fire on the Didact. Vale is coming in with her SMG as well, but really there isn't much fire going on here. It's more just everybody scaling out the situation and they're about to go into a full-on firefight. I also wanted very distinct colors in this diorama. You'll see the light greens representing fields and meadows on the outskirts of the jungle. The river running in has a dark green base plate where all of the moss will have swollen from the water. The grass gets much darker as we enter the jungle and it's dark lush greens with some rocky terrain. I've made sure to elevate parts of that rocky terrain a lot more with extra 
of boulders and rocks. Yeah, really, the colors are one of the main focal points of this diorama. Just wanted a full, vibrant set of flowers, grass, jungle. Like, this is definitely a lush scene. I definitely wanted the main attention of this diorama to be on the didact. And we thought of a really cool way of doing that. He's actually suspended through the air, just levitating, kind of a little Mary Poppins-esque. He's strangling this marine who is also suspended in the air. These rods are just perfect for doing that. And these flowers also allow you to suspend very secretly. And yeah, this didact just looks fantastic. I moved the trees up a lot. I increased their height to make sure nothing contrasted with him. So he's like the forceful part of this scene. Yeah, he's floating away from all these marines that he's murdered quite recently. He's commanding this crawler and the Watcher, who have both separated into different firefights. The Marines, I just love these Halo 4 Marines so much. I think they have so much personality compared to most Marines. We've got this one stuck in the barbed wire fence, probably still alive. There's a ton of different Marines here. I like the one at the back where the Spartan soldier is kicking him while he's down with a pulse grenade primed. I like this Marine here being helped up by the medic and another medic covering his back. I gave this assault rifle a bayonet. Think they are awesome, but this Spartan soldier is about to engage with them, give them a whole new set of problems. This Marine's attention is definitely on the crawler, but this is running away from them. It's heading straight for this Spartan, or maybe for its kill. It might have taken this Marine out earlier and it's coming back after being spooked away by the Spartans. It's gonna try and come back in for a little feast. I don't know if these things actually eat people. I don't know if they need to eat at all, considering they're robots. Who knows? Let me know if you, uh, if you know the lore behind the crawlers there. Then I thought I'd definitely give Buck the more human role here. Like he's definitely the most humanized of the Spartans in Fireteam Osiris. So he would be the one looking after this Marine. Spartan Tanaka has the Arrow of Time sniper rifle. She's going to be taking a shot straight at the Didact. So is Vale. She was actually about to shoot at the Didact, but the Watcher came out of nowhere. She has to start shooting at that. The other gunfire is coming from Locke. And this is one of my favorite parts of the diorama. This took a long time to figure figure out. Really difficult to suspend Locke from this canopy. We found a trick in the end where we attached the Lawgiver shotgun, sort of clipped that into one of the branch holsters, and then had this one coming out of the side. I definitely wanted some more canopy to try and hide him, cover him up, and I think it just worked out so perfectly in the end. He is the assassin, the only operative after all, so he would be the one on top of the trees trying to sneak up on the didact, firing down on the mithril didact there. Fantastic. All of this new foliage is just so wonderful. We have flowers everywhere just blooming out of all the corners that I could possibly squeeze them into. We have a load of nice marine life, including this ocean creature here, this coral, and then we've also got a little crab, starfish, and shell all down the river. Some more sort of river oceanic kind of foliage there, and then more and more flowers. This opens up into sort of like a green space. This is not, there's not much going on here on purpose. I want this to just be like an open meadow. But definitely tons of flowers. A load of these like sticking up sort of needle things that I guess are the early on shoots of these bamboos. They're just growing for the first time now. And there is absolutely loads of them. I mean, the more you look at this diorama, the more you realize it's packed full of layers, packed full of life and color. Like this is definitely my most expressive diorama I've made. Cause like usually my dioramas are massive battles, which I do love, but this one just has so so much green, so much color, and really just thanks to all of these new terrain pieces. This isn't even a third of what I got sent, so I'm really excited to see what boundaries I can push in the future to like make even more expressive dioramas. That's all for today, folks. This is my brand new Halo 5 diorama. Thanks so much to everyone who tuned into the live stream and helped build it. It was such a blast hanging out with you guys as always. And yeah, let me know what kind of diorama you would like to see next. The sky is the limit. Now I have all of these base plates, all of these extra scenery pieces. Like I wanna go nuts with dioramas leading into summer. There are just so many awesome things to make. So you stay awesome, you stay safe out there, guys. And the Mithril Didact is signing off. Dun 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 dun.